my mo own background is like that of most uh, middle class families in india uh, education was the best gift that parents can give so i made it to iit many years ago uh, i went to iit kanpur then i did mba at iim calcutta after working for just about 4 years uh, in the corporate life i became an entrepreneur in 1995 when there were no vcs and startup culture was not there so i set up a company which was india's first marketing services company uh, it was called solutions integrated between 95 and 2005 we grew to 3000 people uh, with four offices in india and four outside india we were essentially helping uh, multinationals coming into india technology companies like hp intel cisco etc uh, build a business here uh, 2006 we sold part of the stake to the french group called the publicis group uh, i continue to run the business till 2010 uh, i had a second business which was an offshoot of the first business uh, which was a contract sales staffing business so we were 15000 people by 2006 So essentially, we were providing contract salespeople to the likes of ICICI Bank, Hindustan Lever, uh, Castrol, etc. That business got sold to a Dutch multinational. So 2010 to 13, I stayed with the French group, Publicis Group. I was India chairperson for all their media businesses and digital businesses. So while I was there, I got a bird's eye view from where the digital world was headed. Uh, Simultaneously, my co-founder Suresh, he and I were classmates at IIM Calcutta. We've known each other for many, many years. Uh, he was an entrepreneur out of Singapore. He set up an analytics firm, which got sold to IBM. Uh, he was with IBM from 2010 to 12. So, what was happening was suddenly the emergence of big data as a new concept came about, and we felt that the big data. was a convergence of his area of expertise and my area of expertise his world of analytics and my world of internet and digital and we said that this is a great business opportunity and once you've been an entrepreneur it's hard to work in a corporate large corporate so we then put our heads together to say let's set up creon and late 2013 was when creon came to life actually the interesting thing is if you have built and sold businesses successfully in the past the world believes that uh you can do it easily and therefore this time around when we started in 2013 raising money was the easiest part actually uh so we were fortunate to raise money quickly uh we were fortunate to attract a small core team together very well a uh, very high quality team so these two things come easily uh but what does not change is that you still have to build a good product and uh you have to go out and get customers who are willing to pay you for it those challenges don't go away whether you're doing it the first time second time or third time uh so and also our level of ambition this time was very different when i started in 95 you were just testing the waters you didn't know any better it was more youthfulness than anything else this time around we set a global ambition on day 1 we said we want to build a globally successful big data company uh we wanted a presence in all the major markets across the world so while we headquartered in singapore we focused on southeast asia india middle east uk us as markets from day one so we just were a lot more ambitious uh but that it it has been uh a, a hard it has been a lot of hard work to build the product and go out and get customers fortunately we made gradual progress uh i mean as entrepreneurs you're always optimistic and you would have wished it to have happened much faster but i think we're making steady progress uh, we're fortunate that uh, we have uh, some of the top banks in the world top airlines in the world etc as our customers and on the investment side we have people like ratan tata as investors uh, mitsui corporation of japan is an investor so i think it's worked out well uh, i'd have liked it to happen faster Uh, but it has been hard work i personally never worked as hard in my life at this age i worked a lot harder than what i did with my previous startup like any hot space uh, big data is a very crowded space you literally see hundreds of companies across the world who entered the space but uh, it's uh, it's not one monolithic space there are many different horizontals many different verticals so you can do many different things here but still have a space for yourself that's one part of the context The second part of the context is even for large Fortune 500 companies and others they know that big data is important for the future but they have a very hazy idea for what they can do with big data 
So which is why what we decided to do was to create a very tangible offering and we our tangible offering is a product called Maya which is deployed at the front end which means that it allows companies to engage their own customers better. See traditionally if you look at what a bank or an airline or a hotel or a retailer has done they have used things like CRM or loyalty programs to engage their customers better. But 10 years ago uh, I did CRM and loyalty for a living but what has changed fundamentally in the last 10 years is the data explosion. If you look at yourself and the mobile handset that you have, the number of sites that you browse, uh, the amount of data that you generate is massive and this is true for every consumer in the world. And big companies have no idea how to harness that data which is lying outside. So what we have done is we have found a way to completely radically transform traditional ways of doing CRM and loyalty. Uh, so we have three patents that we have filed and one patent is about how to harness the data that is lying outside. We built a global graph called the consumer taste graph which is Crayon's IP. Uh, the second patent is how do you take this graph and connect it to a bank's data, retailer's data, hotel's data. When you connect the small amount of data that those companies have inside with the massive graph that Crayon brings from outside, literally magic happens and I will give you a couple of examples for what happens. Uh, our first customer and long standing customer is a hotel chain headquartered out of UK. Over the last two years uh, what we do is every t we have allowed them to engage their guests better. As you know that like in most industries there is no loyalty even with hotels. People will book a hotel room wherever they get the best rate and wherever the location is best. But we have found a way to dramatically improve the repeat rate for guests coming back. We have increased the revenue per booking by as high as $80 per booking. How do we do that? When guests come back repeatedly they spend on things other than the room also. They spend on food, they spend on local entertainment that the hotel arranges, uh, they spend on room upgrades and purely because our technology or the product Maya allows the hotel chain to build loyalty among guests, uh, suddenly they are able to get almost $80 extra per room booking uh, unlike traditional. Th that is in the case of a hotel. In the case of banks and uh, we today deployed in banks in US, Middle East, India, Southeast Asia. In all these cases are, we are deployed in the credit card businesses of banks. Credit card like hotels is a competitive business. By using our product banks are able to reach out to individual customers and bring them offers and deals that are relevant to them. Uh, rather than send every card customer a blanket email saying 20% discount across the country, they have the ability using our technology to say you like a uh, specific restaurants, Moti Mahal in Delhi and mainland China and something else, they will get your deal on that. If someone else likes Gulati and Pandara Road and some other restaurant, they will get your deal on that. And by reaching out to each customer on an individual basis by knowing what he or she likes, suddenly the customer also feels that this bank is taking the trouble to understand me better. And when you do that, you, s you build a relationship and you may have three credit cards in the wallet, but you use that bank's credit card a lot more. So we are able to drive substantial increase in card member spends. Uh, you can say we are able to drive as much as uh, uh, 500 to 1000 rupees of extra spend per card customer uh, on an ongoing basis and when you do that for banks uh, that is a big deal for them actually. So essentially it allows banks and hotels and airlines to build loyalty and get more revenues from their customers. That is the use case or case study that uh, we offer to everyone. As I said there are hundreds of players in this space across the world but if you look at it like a grid there are lots of people who play horizontally, some people will offer what is called as big data infrastructure, some people will offer big data storage and processing capabilities, some others will offer capabilities for analytics, some others will offer capabilities for visualization. So these are different horizontals and each of these spaces there are different players. For example in terms of big data infrastructure you will have the big players like IBM and Cisco and Oracle etc playing and as you move up uh, there are different players in each of these spaces. Then there are vertically oriented players. 
there are companies which will only have expertise in retail there are companies which will have only an expertise in uh, uh, banks there are companies which will only have uh, expertise in manufacturing uh, they'll have vertical oriented expertise the other way to look at the market is there are companies which will offer big data services which means it's like indian it services companies right so for example a company like new sigma or fractal from india would be an and services players they will tell the client give me your data i will process the data and give it back to you whereas other companies like us are product companies so we have we are a, one way we, uh, we, we are different is we are a product company and we are strongly focused on two verticals uh, banking and hospitality and travel and within those verticals we are fully integrated that means we do everything from data processing to storage to infrastructure to visualization and a final application so it's a fully integrated product so that's what differentiates us but what really differentiates us uh, is our ip or the three patents that we have filed uh, our first patent is for our taste graph our second patent is for our algorithms and the third patent we have filed is for the way our taste graph connects with the data of a bank or a hotel now these three patents are completely differentiated and today what happens is when we go particularly to banks or airlines invariably we hear that no one else does what you do and the deals that we win are without an rfp without a tender it is a new innovation and they just have to decide that they have to do it uh, so we are in a lucky position where really speaking there is no direct competition so the best way for me to explain the potential is to take a slightly different example those of us who have shopped on flipkart or amazon know that when we buy a product or visit their site they make recommendations if you people who buy this book also buy this book people who buy the shirt also buy the shirt now that is known as personalized recommendations they're doing that because they have lot of data they analyze the data and they know that these are the kind of patterns that emerge now all of us as consumers value that recommendation because it saves us some trouble but today this recommendation business is limited to online retailers or e-commerce players only what we are trying to do is to bring this power to the traditional brick and mortar enterprises banks hotels airlines fmcg companies uh, think of anyone who has customers if you can bring the same power to them it simplifies your life let me give you an example uh, uh, today if you look at the market for just detergents for washing clothes and you look at all the companies which offer it and the different products they offer some have powder some have washing machine powder some have bars some have liquids there will be at least 100 different options that you or i as a consumer have but imagine if there is technology that allows that company uh, allows you to figure out on your mobile phone okay these are the three that are really relevant for me knowing your past behavior your family's lifestyle and taste and uh, price etc if someone is able to simplify and say ye teen cheeze hain aapke liye or let's imagine that tomorrow you're going on a holiday to goa today we uh, go on one of the travel sites to book a ticket then we go and book a hotel then we figure out what sightseeing i will do in goa if you as a consumer can easily say based on my family's budget taste past behavior very quickly someone gives you a recommendation saying this is the best flight for you this is the best hotel for you this is the best location for you in goa this is what you can do in goa rather than you run hundreds of google searches or asking friends on facebook so this is about bringing the power of personalization to every individual in the world in every industry that you can think of because all of us today are very busy time is what we have limited uh, with us and if you can simplify things for consumers uh, and across every aspect of their life it just uh, they see a lot of value and therefore that is what we are seeking to achieve so the potential is you can do this in every industry you can do it in every market across the world actually the indian market is very interesting because it's obviously got large scale Uh, i'll take banks banks here will have 25 million 30 million credit cards uh, uh, compared to we work in dubai or middle east where a bank at most will have 1 million credit cards so the indian market in terms of scale in things like credit cards where we operate is similar to us us has banks which have 25 30 million credit cards so it's very interesting but india is a very price sensitive market and also when it comes to technology 
adoption it is a bit slow it is not that the decision makers and banks are unaware of this need but inherently they tend to wait for a while for a technology to get adopted by someone else before they make the move uh, and therefore what we have done is for the last two years we did not active while we went and made all the key banks in India aware of our solution but we spent only a limited amount of time. We were very clear that the moment we got banks in markets like US, UK, Middle East adopting our technology the Indian banks would follow suit and that is what is happening now. So therefore I think Indian market is important has great potential but I think timing is important purely because of the way they adopt new technologies and the price they are willing to pay and also the decision making process takes long because India has a strong technology base. So it is easy for a company to believe that I can do it myself why do I need someone else to come but eventually they come and we are now beginning to sign some very big contracts in India also. So I am very very bullish about the potential per se. When I started my first venture uh, people thought I was mad. Uh, when you start go and start something people either say iski nokri chali gai ya ye pagal ho gaya karke. So that was when in the mid 90s but I think thanks to the initial wave of Infosys, Wipro, HCL, Cognizant etc. Gradually by 2000 or early 2000s uh, startup culture got a respectability and software was uh, the first area of boom. Then post 2000 once the dot com craze started and VC funding came I think it gradually got mainstream. So the next wave I would say where we owe a lot of credit are people like Nokri.com and Make My Trip etc because the next generation of entrepreneurs came. Even at that point of time it was slightly limited in terms of the number of people who did this but last 5 years and particularly the last 3 to 4 years I think has it is really gone through the roof. And I have been watching this closely because I have been a member of Thai, I am an active angel investor through the Indian Angel Network and I mentor a lot of startups. Uh, so what is really heartening to see now is that when youngsters graduate from college it could be an IIT, it could be a, another engineering college, it could be something else they are talking about going and starting their venture right away and not waiting and the families do not mind. So that is completely changed and I think what the government is now doing with Startup India I think will make it really 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 uh, mainstream in India. So I think what is interesting is uh, 15 years ago everyone wanted to do software, uh, 10 years ago everyone wanted to do things with uh, which were termed as dot com, uh, 5 years ago it was e-commerce, 3 years ago it became mobile but I think what is now happening is people are now seeing software and internet and mobile as more enabling technologies. So you could use this to improve uh, let us say access to information in rural areas, you could use to uh, improve I mean, uh, I mean you hear of good ideas every day, you hear of ideas where people are saying I can deliver food at railway stations when a train passes through a station, uh, I have businesses uh, that I am familiar with where it is about saying how can I create a voice like Facebook for the masses. Uh, Facebook requires you to be familiar with the internet but when you have a large illiterate population who can who are more comfortable with voice rather than internet can you create a Facebook like product for the masses which relies on voice rather than data. I think therefore the there is no end to the kind of possibilities and I think most entrepreneurs coming out today are coming out with the full range of creative ideas. There is of course the herd mentality where everyone wants to start an e-commerce business or a mobile app business but I think there is a real real uh, emergence of a whole range of creative ideas coming out.